Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope everyone's doing great. One of the most frequent questions that I get asked here at TM Aquatics is what foods do I like to feed my high pan cistrus and my picoltias? So today in this video we're going to talk about some of my favorite foods, foods I can't get anymore, and a new food that I'm really excited to try. So I do hope you stick around and check this one out. All right, YouTube, if you've been following my channel for any length of time or have gone back and watched some of my previous videos on what I feed my plecos here at TM Aquatics, you've probably heard me talk about this food right here, Evo Aquaristic. And this has been one of my favorite foods here at TM Aquatics and one of my go-to staples, especially for my high pan cistrus. I like Evo Aquaristic for a few different reasons. Number one, it doesn't break down in the water, it doesn't cloud the water, and the fish just absolutely smash this food. Uh, I've been feeding the seafood blend, the insect blend, and the mussel blend. The downsides to Ebo Aquaristic, number one, there's two. There's, the first one is it's sometimes hard to get an ingredients list and find out what the ingredients are with each of their different formulas and the percentages and etc. But the real problem is I can't buy this in the United States anymore. There was only one company that I'm aware of that was selling this in the United States. They haven't had it for over a year. Now I've emailed that company numerous times, I've messaged them on Facebook, and not once have I received a response. So I'm starting to think they might be out of business, either that or they just have the worst possible customer service. But anyways, I've had to move on from Ebo Aquaristic, add some different foods here, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new foods that I'm feeding, some of my favorites, and then we're going to take a look at some new foods as well. All right, YouTube, so over here on this shelf, uh, this is where I have a lot of my foods that I'm currently feeding my uh, fish or my plecos here in the fish room. There's also a lot of foods down here, a bunch of stuff from Ken's Fish. Then I have a bunch of stuff I buy in bulk and put in these little soup containers. And um, I'm not gonna go through each one. Uh, I'm just gonna talk about really the um, staple foods that I'm feeding my fish. And then what I also want to do in this video is talk about a brand new food or a food that's relatively newer to the market that I'm extremely excited to try and that comes from our friends at Pleco Ceramics. And we'll highlight that food here in just a moment. But with Ebo Aquaristic, see I've got all my Ebo over here and all my packages are almost gone, hardly any left. Uh, I've had to uh, find a replacement for kind of a staple uh, pellet food. Um, since I can't buy Ebo anymore. Uh, and I've been trying this food. I actually was trying this food before I was um, having issues with Ebo. But now this is my go-to, and that's Dr. Basslier. And this food is easily uh, available. You can buy this through Ken's Fish. I buy mine through um, Lisa at Super Cichlids. And I feed the uh, XL, or the extra large size. I think it's like a one and a half millimeter to two millimeter size pellet. I'm feeding the regular, the green, the acai, the garlic, the aloe, and the forte. And my fish just absolutely love it. Both the picoltias and the high pan cistrus just absolutely love that. Now what I like about the Basslier, um, in addition to having good ingredients, just like the Ebo, uh, it doesn't break down real fast in the water column. In fact, I think it holds up and maintains its integrity, integrity even better than Ebo Aquaristic. There's no cloudy water, nothing like that. So this is kind of my new go-to pellet food for my, my plecos. Now, this food right here, um, this has just kind of been a fluke that I discovered in my fish room. I actually received a, a container of this. I've since bought this one um, a couple times. Uh, Extreme Aquatic Foods Big Fella. Um, I received a container from my fish club um, and I forgot how I got that. It was, I don't know, a raffle or something like that. Um, this isn't formulated for plecos, but oddly enough, all my plecos just absolutely love this food. The only downside is it doesn't sink as quickly as other foods so sometimes it can be carried into like my 120 gallon has a couple of overflows sometimes it can get sucked into the overflow and get caught up in the pre-filter and get sucked into some of the you know, hang on back filters it will sink over time uh, i suppose i could wet it ahead of time for maybe a minute or two and then add it to the tank but all my plecos really love this food again though it's not formulated for pleco specifically but 
but they do like it. Now, some foods that I'm feeding some of my fry, um, I kind of moved over to uh, some of the NLS, the Thera A, for some of my grow outs. And then, uh, especially with the Picoltias, the Omega-1, the mini veggie pellets, when they're really small, and then as they get a little more size to them, um, the larger ve veggie pellets. Good ingredients, solid food, good uh, overall brand recognition, and easily sourced here in the United States, both the NLS and the Omega-1. But um, the Extreme, the Dr. Bassleer, the Omega-1, and the um, uh, NLS, have a couple different types here in the fish room. Those are some of my staples. Now, uh, a different pellet that I discovered, um, well, it was probably last year, is uh, this soft grand uh, pellet. And this comes from, um, I don't recall, it's a German company that makes this food. And um, there's decent ingredients to it. Uh, the only person selling it in the United States, I believe, is Cascadia Aquatics. And I've purchased this several times. My Zebra Plecos just absolutely love this. Uh, the L260s absolutely love it. I have fed this to my new 471s and the 174s. They like it as well. Um, it is a little spendy, um, but you know, you're going to spend money if you want to feed the best food to your fish. So uh, if you're looking for like a soft gram pellet, and that's what all the Ebo was. Ebo was a soft gram pellet, meaning it wasn't a real hard, it was soft. Um, this is a decent food, so you might want to you know, check out Cascadia Aquatics. They're on Facebook. Um, they have a, a website as well. And try this. They've got some other foods, um, discus foods and uh, a couple other pellet foods. Now, in addition to that, of course, I feed a lot of rapashi. And if the camera would focus, I feed a lot of rapashi. Now, specifically, um, I'm feeding the bottom scratcher mixed 50-50 with Soylent Green, and I feed that same mix to both my high pans and my Picoltias. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you know, high pans, they're carnivorous. They just need more meteor proteins and, you know, meteor foods. I'm not sure that's necessarily true. The more I read, the more I talk to other people, the more we dig into this, people are the, the scientists, they're those people that are collecting, those that are the biologists. Um, they're finding that these high pans have a little more vegetable matter in their diet than maybe the hobby realizes. So I've talked to a couple people that are actual experts in um, dietary needs of Laura Caraday, and they suggested that I add more greens into their diet. So <clears throat> that's what I've done. I've, I've added or started mixing the bottom scratcher with Soylent Green. Now, the reason I like the bottom scratcher also is it's more of a uh, uh, insect meal. It's got krill meal and then uh, black soldier fly larva meal as the second ingredient. And in addition to uh, the bottom scratcher, I also like feeding the rapashi grub pie um, because again, it's more of an insect based uh, protein rather than a fish meal type protein. And um, the more we learn about these fish, they're, you know, they find more insect larva and insect in the, uh, in the plecos in the wild than they do fish. Plecos are not sitting there chewing on fish all day. They're foraging on biofilm and algae and whatnot, and little tiny crustaceans and insects are embedded in that, and that's where they're getting a lot of their protein. But in any case, um, I feed a lot of the rapashi. I feed it almost, uh, I think, every other day. Uh, not every day, but every other day they're getting rapashi. Again, mixed 50% bottom scratcher, 50% soylent green to both my picoltias and my um, high pan citrus. But as I mentioned earlier, oh, there is another food that I do like feeding my picoltias, and that is from Your Fish Stuff, and it's these green pellets, green veggie pellets. And I'm going to turn this around real quick. And this has uh, been a pretty good staple for my picoltias. Uh, my high pans really haven't touched this much, um, but they just have really good ingredients on here. Uh, green pea protein, herring meal, uh, kelp meal, krill, squid, spirulina, uh, chlorella, algae, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing, I'm probably not, I'm butchering that one. But it's just got 
real decent ingredients and it's really affordable food too so that comes from your fish stuff the green veggie pellets my picoltias really love it as well as my l397s which i have over here and down here they absolutely just destroy this food so anyways what with that being said there is a new food on the market that i'm super excited to feed and uh, let's talk about that one real quick all right, YouTube, so there's a newer Pleco food that I've been wanting to try now ever since I first saw it a few months ago. And uh, that food comes from our friends at Pleco Ceramics. Now, I've been seeing a lot of this on Facebook. There's been a couple of YouTube videos um, from Pleco Ceramics talking about this food, showing how to mix it, how to feed it to your fish, etc. So I've been real excited to try this, and I was actually putting in an order and um, was going to submit my first order for this and Yuri the uh, owner of Pleco Ceramics reached out to me and said hey Tom we'll go ahead and send you some complimentary you know if you could try it out maybe make a YouTube video mention it whatever um, that'd be great and that's what I'm doing um, in today's video I just want to talk about this food and perhaps direct you over to the Pleco Ceramics YouTube channel because Yuri already shows how to mix it and how to feed it now, I'll also make my own video on this demonstrating how to mix it, how to feed it, and talk about what I saw for results. Um, but I think I'm really going to like this. Now, this food, you mix it with water similar to Rapashi. It doesn't turn into a gel like Rapashi where it's a pliable concoction where you can cut it into cubes and skewer it with a fork or something, drop it in your tank and let your fish munch on it. Uh, this turns into more of a viscous paste where you're going to spread it out on like a rock. I think he spreads it out on sandstone or something like that. I'm going to spread it out on the bottom of a tile and um, you spread it out. You let it dry for a couple days. You spread it out in a thin layer, let it dry for a couple days. And what that does is it allows the fish to go over these surfaces and feed in a more natural way where they're scraping the biofilm or in this case, this, this food off the surfaces. Now, what I also like are the ingredients and I'm just going to turn this around because I wrote the ingredients on the on the back here. Um, gamaras or scuds, that's the number one ingredient. Insect meal, shrimp meal, bloodworm, freshwater algae, not a saltwater algae, but a freshwater algae, freshwater sponges. Then there's a couple vitamins added and a binder of wheat meal. So overall, real decent ingredients. And uh, I think just the way that it's fed to the fish combined with the ingredients, I think I'm gonna like this stuff. Now, you know, like those uh, soft gram pellets from Cascadia Aquatics, it's a little spendy. A package of this, I think, runs about $20. I don't know how long that will, will carry you. I guess it's all relative to how many fish you have, how many tanks you have, how much you're feeding, etc. cetera. Um, but I do plan to add this into my regular rotation of foods here at TM Aquatics. So anyways, um, when this video is done, I would highly recommend that you go over to the Pleco Ceramics uh, YouTube channel and watch the video where they're talking about this. Now, I think Yuri feeds this almost exclusively to his fish room. And uh, people can debate uh, numbers, processes. Uh, you can debate theory. You can debate you know, ingredients. You can debate a whole bunch of stuff. What you can't debate are results. And what I'm going to tell you, if you haven't seen what Yuri is doing with his Pleco uh, fish room, you're in for a surprise. He is dumping caves full of zebra Pleco fry, L174s, a whole bunch of other different high pans. He's dumping caves full of fry almost on a daily basis. So he's doing something extremely right. And if he's feeding this on a regular basis in his fish room and he's getting those types of results, you better darn guarantee or uh, believe that I'm going to try that as well. So anyways, check out Pleco Ceramics, their, their YouTube channel. Uh, if you like what you see, click the subscribe button, subscribe to his channel. The guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to Plecos. All right, before I end this video, I'm going to go ahead and answer a question that I know is going to be asked, and that is, do I feed any frozen foods or live foods to my Plecos here at TM Aquatics? And the answer to that is, not really, sometimes um, it just depends. Um, frozen bloodworms, frozen Daphnia are the only two frozen foods that I have here at TM Aquatics. The Daphnia I feed to my Corydoras. 
the blood worms I'll feed to my Corydoras, but I'll also feed frozen blood worms to some of the dither fish here at TM Aquatics. Now sometimes I'll put too much in a tank and it'll settle to the bottom where I have some plecos, um, mainly Pacoltias, L494s, the L134s. I don't have any dithers in with my high pan cistrus. Um, sometimes I'll feed too much and it'll sink to the bottom and the high pan, or the Pacoltias will, will get the, the blood worms. Sometimes I'll thaw out too many blood worms and then at the end of the night I'll go ahead and just dump those in the Pacoltia tanks. Now, the L494s, the L134s, those are four and a half inch fish. Um, they don't have any issue with that at all. I'll even feed some of the frozen blood worms if I have too much to my L397s. Um, even though most people say, oh, you can't feed any proteins to L397s, the Panaculus, yeah, you can. In fact, I know someone who actually triggers his breed by feeding chopped up uh, cocktail shrimp. So you just don't wanna feed consecutive high protein meat foods day after day after day with the 397s, but I digressed. Uh, so I will feed frozen blood worms, uh, depending on the situation, to my Pacoltias, never to my high pans. I, I have read and I have talked to others who are more experienced with plecos than I am, where they have experienced issues uh, of intestinal blockages with some of their smaller fish uh, because they fed uh, frozen blood worms. So it's believed by many uh, of the people who hang out in the pleco circles that I hang out in that feeding frozen blood worms to small fish uh, can cause intestinal blockages. So I don't feed any frozen blood worms to any fish under two inches of size. Um, I don't even run the risk of feeding frozen blood worms to my high pan cistrus. The four types of high pan cistrus that I keep here, the L4, uh, L46 zebra pleco, the L260 queen arabesque, the L471 mini snowball, and the L174, those are all real small high pan cistrus. I don't even want to risk it and feed the adults frozen blood worms, although I'm sure it's pretty, it's safe. Uh, the 471s, the 174s, those are just little itty bitties right now, maybe an inch and a quarter at most. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna even risk it, so I'm not even gonna chance it. So. Um, now, with that being said, I don't know what the nutritional value is of frozen blood worms and with the types of foods that I'm feeding. It's just, I don't think it's necessary at all. Um, now, when it comes to live foods, I'll feed live baby brine shrimp from time to time to my, um, my little juvenile freshly hashed L260s and L134s. And, um, but you have to be really careful. Now, there's, I don't want to say it's a rumor because it's not a rumor, but... I think others in this hobby believe it's a rumor that if you feed live baby brine shrimp to really newly hatched uh, plecos that the brine shrimp can cause intestinal blockages as well. It's not a rumor. I've had experienced that here at TM Aquatics. Now the issue is when you are hatching live baby brine shrimp, some of the unhatched cysts uh, that are still in the shell will sink to the bottom and they don't hatch. They're down there at the bottom with all the, you know, when you remove the brine, baby brine shrimp from the air, you'll notice that the baby brine shrimp sink to the bottom, the uh, shells from the hatch cysts float to the top. Where do the unhatched cysts go? I mean, when you're buying baby brine shrimp eggs, you're buying 90% hatch rate, 85% hatch rate. Where's the other 10 or 15% going? Are they floating to the surface? Maybe some are. Are they sinking to the bottom? Yeah, some are doing that as well. Uh, so you need to be very careful, especially these uh, overpriced $45, $50 blender, baby brine shrimp blender hatchery things. Um, I would never use those in a fish room where I'm feeding plecos. Now you might have those blender style overpriced pieces of plastic hatching your baby brine shrimp. I use a $1 pickle jar and it's worked great for me for over three decades. Um, but either way, you just have to make sure that when you remove that air, Make sure you have enough time for everything to separate properly. And even though the baby brine shrimp are gonna go down towards the bottom, um, I wouldn't feed that to baby plecos. What I do is I put a light in the middle of the water column, the baby brine shrimp will go to that light, and then I'll siphon them out of my pickle jar in the middle of the water column. That way I know I'm just getting baby brine shrimp, no hatched shells, no unhatched cysts, nothing like that, just baby brine shrimp. But I have experienced little baby, uh, especially the L134s, getting intestinal blockages after feeding live baby brine shrimp. And that's because I didn't do my due diligence, I didn't take enough time to let the eggs and the cysts and the baby brine shrimp sort and separate, 
and that's shame on me. Won't make that mistake again. So anyways, just feed those types of foods with caution, both by, uh, frozen blood worms and baby brine shrimp. So anyways, I digress a little bit. Sorry, that got a little bit long and uh, time to wrap this thing up. All right, YouTube, so those are some of the foods that I'm currently feeding here at TM Aquatics, why I like them, uh, the staples that I'm using. I'm really excited to try Yuri's new food from Pleco Ceramics. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, see how that food is mixed, how it's fed. I think you'll agree that it's probably gonna be a fantastic food that allows those fish to feed in a more natural way. And uh, given the ingredients of that food, I think it's gonna be a hit. So anyways, I appreciate each and every one of you stopping by my channel, taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. When time allows, I'll do my best to get to those uh, questions and answer. Uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Doesn't matter to me, just hit one of the two. And if you want to continue following along the TM Aquatics journey, learning a little bit more about Plecos and Corydoras, how we breed them, how we hatch them, how we raise them, all that kind of good stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, join the team. So anyways, again, appreciate you taking time. And until the next one, we'll catch you all later.